everyone. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and I'm here today with a unique soft blank dyeing video. Today we are going to use these Wilton food coloring edible color markers to write song lyrics onto a sock blank. This is a knit pick stroll sock blank and it is knit with two strands of fingering weight yarn together so that way after we have dyed this blank you can unravel it and get two identical 50 gram skeins of yarn. Now the song lyrics that we write are not something that will be visible in whatever is made out of this yarn in the end. So this is sort of almost like a hidden message and a way to write something to someone you love or care about and I think that it'll be really fun. Before we start writing our song lyrics on this blank, I want to dye the blank so that way we have a base background color that we will write on top. And to do that I am going to dip dye this dry blank in a combination of Wilton's Burgundy and Wilton's Royal Blue food coloring. The song lyrics I am going to write today are, is a song that was written and performed by my husband Keith's band. The song is called Oasis and it is one of my favorite songs that the band wrote. So I let Keith pick the colors for the background of this blank. For today's dye, I added one eighth of a teaspoon of Wilton's Royal Blue and then under, so probably two thirds, of a quarter teaspoon of Wilton's Burgundy. And these, and these are colors that Keith picked out for this project. In our warming dye bath, I have eight cups of water. And I'm going to add three tablespoons, approximately, of white vinegar. And we are going to let this heat up to a boil before we add our dye. We are at a boil. And now I am going to add our food coloring. Which, it's funny that at first Keith picked out Wilton's Violet and I was like, oh, I really should do something non-purple because I always pick purple. And then, he, you know, so he picked the burgundy and the blue, not realizing that I was planning to do dip dyeing, so I think that that's just pretty funny. But I have the blank folded in thirds as exactly as it came out of the package. And my plan is to start dip dyeing, oh yeah, that's purple, um, this dry blank in by the corner. Um, and so to see what kind of patterns we get. Now my concern is that this color will be too dark for what I want to do with the markers to really show up, but we will have to see. But this is so funny because this is looking very, very uh, violety right now. And not to mention this is heavy, but maybe we'll get some paler sections and I can write the lyrics in those paler areas. So I can no longer keep the blank sort of straight. You can see that it's the weight of this is sort of straining against me. I'm curious what the colors will look like inside the folds. I think that that could be kind of cool. Whoop. And up, we're starting to get into paler territory. Some dye has crashed out. Okay, you can start to see the bottom of the pot. So I might yeah, go ahead and add the rest of this blank in. How funny that I was not gonna do a broken violet video. And I mean, this isn't violet, since it's the burgundy which has some red 40 in it, in addition to the red 3. We have this purple, but it's less fuchsia than what we do when we are working with just Wilton's violet. But you can see, after that dip dyeing, most of the color is already in our blank. But I'm going to go ahead and let this sit um, in here for, I think, five, five more minutes and then we will remove the blank so it can cool. But we definitely have some sections that are pale enough for us to use these food riders on it. 
It has been five minutes. Now I'm gonna turn off the heat and use my tongs to remove the yarn. And you can see that the dye bath is clear. Now, I don't really want to do like a full reveal quite yet, but I am sort of loosening it up in this heat safe bowl because I want um, it to cool quickly so we can start writing on the fibers. You'll notice that there's a tiny bit of hot pink over here. That's because some of the reds have crashed out and when I was removing it, I think we rubbed it against the side of the pot. But I think it'll still be very, very pretty. I can comfortably, still warm, and I might regret this as I try to, yep, it's still hot, never mind. <laughs> um, I will, I think, try to spread this out a bit more. I thought that maybe I could wring it out, but what was underneath on the bowl is still really, really hot. So I guess I still need to let it cool some more before <laughs> before I spread it out on the counter. False start. <laughs> Our blank is now a handleable temperature, so I'm going to wring out this excess water and then spread it out on the counter where I will let it finish cooling. But I'm curious to see what kind of patterns we end up with. It's possible that it would have been easier for me to dye this sort of on the bias if uh, it had been pre-soaked because it would go in better. But no matter what, the fabric would stretch a bit. Um, but I actually think that this pattern is really cool. You can see where the corners went in. And we really have these nice gradients of a burgundy to sort of a pale-ish gray blue. And these blue sections actually are pretty perfect for us writing out lyrics. I don't think I'm gonna be able to write maybe an entire song on here, but I can certainly write a message in these paler sections, which will mean that we'll have some more solid sections of the yarn and then we'll get from the writing some sort of speckled sections as well. And I think it'll be really cool. I have zoomed in on the place I am going to start writing. And I think, let's try starting with a black marker. <laughs> and I'll try to start writing on this blank. Oh, this is not that easy. <laughs> this is not easy at all. <laughs> all right, and I'm... I like that the lyrics happen. We can try to make it through in them. Um, <laughs> I'm trying to start writing stories, the story, or the story simple. And you can see that the story is not simple. Um, you can't really read very much of what I am writing right now. <laughs> um, it might be a little easier to try to do this, S-T-O-R. It might be a little easier to try to do this with a spray bottle. I think if you want to, oh, you can kind of read it actually. Uh, barely. Maybe it would be easier on a dry blank versus this wet blank. Um, zoomed out, you can actually read it a lot better than when I try to read it a bit zoomed in. But <laughs> I, I will say that this is not that easy. Oh, the blue's a little easier. Simple. You can see that, you know, this is not just like writing a letter. It takes a little bit of effort. But, the, so the reason why I chose this song is twofold. This is the song Oasis by Free Parking. 
and it is a song that my husband and his band wrote together while we were in grad, grad school. And we actually had our wedding band learn this song and play it at our wedding as a surprise for our friends, because the whole band was there. Um, <laughs> but the other reason why I, why I chose this song is that I have permission to use these lyrics. Um, because, you know, I have permission and I frequently feature uh, free parking songs in some of my time-lapse stuff. So, you've seen me start to struggle. I am going to attempt to keep writing these lyrics, but I am going to speed it up and let you listen to a bit of Oasis by Free Parking. One, two, three, four. through the first verse. Um, I made it through two lines of the song um, in this space. And, you know, and it took me a little while. You can sort of read it. It is cool. It is something that, say, if you have a partner or a sister or a daughter that loves your hand-knit socks, this could totally be worth the effort to try writing something on here. And I zoom in. You know, you are getting really, really fine, fine lines with these markers. And so that is really cool. And even in the black, you see a little bit of breaking through the colors. Not so much that I can tell in the brown, but that is something that is really, really cool. Um, I am struggling to write with these, and so it might be easier, well, I would recommend maybe using um, a needle nose squirt bottle to write a message on the blank. It would be a shorter message that you would write on the blank. You wouldn't be able to get as many details in, but it would be significantly easier. I have one more section right here, and I'm going to try writing, um, instead of writing across the rows, I'm going to try writing this way to see if that is any easier. And I am sort of skipping around in the song to pick one of my favorite lines. Okay, this is not any easier. <laughs> I started trying to go that way and nope. It, the, the fabric stretches so much in that direction that I think it was actually a bit easier. Maybe if I block it a bit first, and I'll try to do this line. And we can just let that be some speckles. <laughs> some of the colors are a bit easier than others. that I love onto this blank. And 
you know, if I were to take a picture of this, it would not really be easy for you to read the words, but the words are there. Now, what is 100% true about this is that when we unravel it, we will get some cool specks of color in a gradient. So I think that these markers can be really, really cool tools, and I plan to use them in the future, and they might make an appearance in one of the SoftBlank special live streams. I don't necessarily recommend trying to use them to write on the knit fabric. That was just hard. But I think that maybe to try to do lines um, or something with them would be really, really cool. My work surface already had plastic wrap on it, but I just laid some across the top of this blank so that way we can wrap up. And ooh, fun! You can see that the color did penetrate through the blank, which is something that I know I am always curious about. Now, I did not need to add any additional vinegar because the blank got some, had vinegar on it from when we dip dyed the yarn. But we do need to heat it again to set the color from these food coloring markers. Um, I knew it was a long shot about whether or not they'd work on yarn just because I didn't know um, how well they would work because it was possible that when writing on something so wet that eventually sort of the color would bleed out and you wouldn't be able to use much color anymore. But they did work in that respect. Um, they work and I know that this color will set once we've heated, once we've heated the yarn. I am excited to play around with them more in the future. I just might try to do more lines and dots versus, you know, versus uh, writing words. But anyway, I'm gonna now microwave this on high in two minute increments for a total of four minutes. After four minutes, the yarn is steamy hot and now we just need to let this cool so we can rinse out the blank. It is now time to rinse out our little leather. And we can see how well these pins work, or these pins, and we can see how well these pens work to apply the dye. And, you know, they didn't spread out that much. So if you want like, a really fine line on your blank, and oh, this is cold, um, if you want really fine lines on your blank, this works great. Um, you can see that the color all stayed and it's not washing out, which, you know, we wouldn't really expect it to wash out because we've done a lot with food coloring before. And I think that this yarn, I'm now adding some plain flare dish soap. Um, and this yarn is going to be really cool um, because when we unravel it, we're going to get specks of green or red or blue, brown, and this black in sort of different orders and it's kind of randomly placed throughout the yarn. My handwriting is not very legible, but these lines are so thin and good. I wonder if you would be able to write on a dry blank and then maybe uh, spray vinegar on top of it to set the color after the fact. Um, I don't know if that's something that would work or if it would be easier to write on the knit fabric, but I think that, you know, if you want to make some special speckled socks with a hidden meaning to them to make for someone, this will absolutely work to allow you to fit more words on a blank than you would be able to fit if you used, uh, say, a um, needle nose squeeze bottle. But anyway, I'm going to keep rinsing this until, well, the water is basically clear already, but I'm going to rinse out all the rest of the soap, and then I'll hang this to dry so we can look at the blank before we unravel it. So this is my handwriting, and I can honestly barely read the words. But, I think it's pretty cool. We have some song lyrics from a song that Keith's band wrote when we were in graduate school. And the lines that we got with these food coloring markers 
are really, really sharp. So if you wanted to dye with some definition, then these markers are pretty worthwhile using. I think it would be helpful to have maybe something like a stencil or something you could press down for making your shapes. But, you know, overall, if you want to write a really short message, then I highly recommend them. We got some color penetration from these markers on the reverse side of the blank. But overall, I expect them to result in looking like some really cool specks when we unravel our yarn. This yarn is stunning. I love that we have the lighter and darker purple sections that are somewhat speckled. And then in some of the paler sections, you see these, the, the speckles coming in from these edible markers that we used to write the song lyrics onto our blank. Here's a close up of the gradient. So you can see the speckling that occurs in the darker sections just because of the way the, the, the yarn is interacting with each other through the knit stitches. That's what give us these light little specks. There are even light little specks in the paler section. It's just a lot more subtle. The thing that is great about using a sock blank to get two identical 50 gram skeins of yarn is that if you want to do something unique, like write a message or song lyrics, you can end up with little multicolored specks from the words that will be identically placed on both of the skeins of yarn. So that way, when you go to knit with these yarns and say you're gonna make socks, you will get these colored specks to show up, you know, in the same place on the sock. And that will just look really intentional, subtle, and awesome. Now looking at the picture, you know, maybe you see the green specks on one side and they don't really show up well on the other, but that's just because you don't see every single strand the way they are around on the Nitty Naughty. And the, the different colored speckles from the words are really only present on a couple of wraps because ultimately they take up a very, very small percentage of the yarn. You can't tell by looking at the yarn on the Nitty Naughty but the yarn is crimped since we unraveled the blank that we dyed. Therefore, I am going to go wet this yarn so to allow those crimps to relax so that way we can store the yarn in skein form without worrying about things getting really tangled. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz and I had a blast dyeing these sock blanks with food coloring and then the food writer markers to write a bit of the song lyrics. It was a little hard to write, but in the end, I think that these yarns that we got are really spectacular with the multicolored specks on top of this purple gradient. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to the Chemist Tutorials YouTube channel. There are a lot of sock blank dyeing videos and live streams going on this week, and so you don't want to miss any of them. Thanks for watching.